Hi everybody, welcome back. In the last video, we started to look at the difference between a a true relationship uh, described in a linear regression form versus the estimated relationship. And so at the beginning of the video, we started with a true regression equation uh, looking something like this. And because we can't observe um, these betas and this error term in practice, what we need to do is estimate all of those things. And so beta 0 hat, beta 1 hat are the estimated effects of beta, and EI is the residual, which is the difference between the true outcome and the observed outcome. And in a way, it's something similar to an estimate of epsilon I, um, although a little different. So in any case, we have this estimated regression equation, and ultimately what we're trying to do is figure out the best, the best variables, the best estimates, beta 0 and beta 1, in order to have, have the closest relationship as possible. So ultimately, we want beta, the estimated beta 0, to be as close as possible to the true beta 0, and we want the estimated beta 1 hat, especially this one, to be as close as possible to the true beta 1 hat. So that if we're looking at something like the effect of health insurance on health, beta 1, beta 1 is the true effect of health insurance on health. And so we want this estimated beta 1 to be as close as possible to that true effect. Okay, and so in this video we're going to look at what these uh, what this regression is actually doing and kind of show you how that looks um, with a few examples on uh, two-dimensional scatter plots. Okay, so if we look at a regression line fitting examples. And this is going to show us what we're actually trying to do here with regression. So let's suppose we have a relationship here, and we have x, and we have y. And if you want to put some uh, real ideas to this, you could think about x as, for example, years of education, or maybe years of experience, or so on and so forth and y, the outcome, is something like income. Okay, and so each individual point uh, is going to be one individual. So there's going to be one person here with a small level of education and a small income. There's going to be another person who has maybe the same level of education, but they have a higher income. And then there are going to be other people who have, say, the same income, but more education. All right? And then there are going to just be more people all along here. And let's say we have something like this. Okay, now, uh, before I move on, I'm going to take a copy of this because I'm going to use it again. Use that again in a second. <clears throat> okay, but let's start here and let's start by. Uh, I need a little more room. By starting with a bad estimated regression equation. Okay, remember, a regression equation, y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x, if you look at this, that's just a line. 
And that's all a regression is. Um, so if we put our little hats on there, we have y hat is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 hat x. And so there are several different lines that we could use uh, to try to fit this uh, data. And we're going to start with a bad example. And you're going to see why it's a bad example here. So let's suppose our beta 0, which is the intercept, was here. And we have a, a slope of 0. And so uh, beta 1 is the slope of that line. And actually, this line here is beta 0 plus beta 1 x. That's the slope of that line. And what regression is doing is it's picking a beta 0 and it's picking a beta 1. Uh, and, it's, and we're looking at these residuals here. So actually, let me use these red. So here is the true, let's say that this is person number two. And so this is y2. That's the true, that's the true income of person number two. But our regression equation thinks that is estimating their, their income to be there. All right, and this is person one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. <clears throat> and so um, our regression equation is estimating the incomes for all of these people. Uh, that's so then you know this person it's right on the dot. So that's uh, not only the true income of person number six, so y6, it's also y hat six. So it's done a good job uh, for that individual. For person number four, it's a little bit off. The true income is y4. The estimated income is y4 hat. Okay, but ultimately, we're looking at the residuals for all of these people and we can see that these residuals are pretty far off um, for a lot of these for a lot of these people, and even worse, uh, an even worse example of a, a really bad fitting line could be something like let's say we have something similar. Let's say that we start the line here at beta zero, and the slope is correct. So this slope is beta 1, but, well, let's do our y and our x. But all of these residuals are huge, so we're super off on, on all of them. Even though the slope is right, uh, we've, we've started at a wrong point. Okay, and so let's go from there and look at a, a good regression equation. So this is a bad estimated regression equation. Let's look at a good estimated regression. Okay, so what we can do here is, um, and ultimately this is all happening in, in some software, but what we're doing here is, let's say we have a, an intercept starting here, beta 0, and regression is trying to fit a line through the points that is going to minimize these residuals. So now, here's y2, that's the true value, and y2 hat is there. And so as you can see, here, the, the residual is much larger. Here, the residual is smaller. And we're going to do that with everybody. And as you can see, the, the estimated regression equation is 
is giving us a much better line with a much better fit. Um, the residuals are going to be much smaller there, especially as you can see among these first ones where we have uh, much larger residuals up there and much smaller residuals here. Okay, and so ultimately there are a few different ways you could attempt to find a line. Regression is trying to find the this best line. This, this is a line and linear regression is just finding this line. That's, that's ultimately what it is. It's finding a line. Um, when you have multiple variables, you can't see it in a two-dimensional space anymore, um, but it's the same concept. You're trying to minimize the distance between the true observations and the estimated observations, and we're fitting a line in order to try to do that. And so let's talk about ultimately what's going on here. To find, or what we call in econometrics, to fit the best estimated regression equation, to fit the best estimated regression equation, I'm just going to abbreviate equation. To fit the best estimated regression equation, we want to minimize the sum of the squared Oops. We want to minimize the sum of the squared residuals. So remember, these are the residuals, and we want them to be very small. So we could just uh, add all of these up. You know, if we compare the distance, you know, we, we add this residual up, and that's going to be a small amount. Here's a small amount. Here's a small amount. We add all those up. And that number is going to be smaller than if we add all of these up. And way smaller than if we add all of these up. And so we're trying to find a line that's going to minimize these sums. Um, but we're, we're going to take that distance and then square it. And the reason that we're squaring it is to give extra weight to... to uh, observations that are really far away. So if there's one residual down here, or one observation down here, that's going to have an extra large residual. Let's call that person 10. That's going to be the residual for person 10. Uh, we want to find a line that's going to be the best fit. And if it's really far away, that's going to be weighted a little bit extra. But in the end, we're trying to minimize these residuals and we're just squaring it uh, to give more weight uh, to, to observations that are further away. And the way that this looks mathematically is as follows. So we want to minimize the sum of the squared residuals for all individuals individuals from i equals 1 all the way up to individual number n. And then that's the residual, and that's the residual square. And we're, gonna, we're going to minimize those residuals by choosing some beta 0 and some beta 1. And that's going to fit our regression line that's going to minimize those squared residuals. So here, this is individual 1, that's E1, that's E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, and so on and so forth. So we're just going to take those uh, residuals, we're going to square all of them, and then E8 and E9. We're going to take all those, we're going to square all of them, 
And then we're just going to add them up. So E1 squared plus E2 squared plus da 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 plus E9 squared. And we're going to add up those residuals. We could do it here. That's going to give us some number. That's whatever. And we would do that here. There's E1 is this whole distance. E2, E3 is also very big. E4, E5, we do that, we square them, and then that, that sum there is going to be way larger than the sum we find here. And what we're doing is we're finding a beta 0 for the intercept on our line, we're finding the beta 1 for the slope of our line, and we're going to choose a beta 1 and a beta 0 to minimize this sum. Okay. So what we're doing there, we're minimizing beta 0 and beta 1. We're choosing beta 1 and beta 0 to minimize the sum of squared residuals. That's going to remember the residual is yi minus yi hat squared. So we're going to square that residual. Oops. Um, okay. And then to take it one more step, we choose beta 0 and beta 1 hat to minimize the sum. These are all just equivalent to each other. Um, what is yi hat? That's just beta 0 minus, well, remember, yi hat is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat xi. And so if we subtract all of that, we're going to subtract and subtract. So yi minus beta 0 hat minus beta 1 hat xi. And then we square that. And now what we have is an equation here that includes our beta 0. It includes our beta 1. Those are what we want to choose in order to minimize this equation. Um, I'm going to skip the next few steps um, because the way that you minimize something is you use calculus. And so you would use some calculus to find the, the optimal uh, beta 0 and beta 1. And when you do that, <laughs> um, if you go to grad school, you can learn all about that. Uh, you're going to end up finding that beta 0 can be defined as the average of y minus the estimated beta 1 hat times the average of x. And the beta 1 hat is going to come out as the following. So this is beta 1 hat is going to come out as the sum of all the individuals with the variation from of all the x's from their means, so if this was, say, years of education, away from the mean value of all the years of education of everybody, minus the variation of the outcome from its mean, the, say, incomes of everybody individually, minus the income, the average income, over the 
again, the variation of x from itself, the average of itself, squared. So um, that's kind of a lot. Um, but actually, if you have some data, uh, you can actually do this um, pretty manually in something like Excel because you would have, for example, a column of X. So you'd have individual I, and you'd have one, two, three, da da da, down to N. You would have X, well, let's say Y, which there is their income. So let's say this person makes 50K, this person makes 60K, so does that person, and person number N makes. 100k. You would have x, that's their years of education. So maybe you got 12, 12, 14, um, 13. Right? And you have all this data. From that, you can get a, an average. And here, maybe you're going to find an average income of 75,000. Maybe you'll find a average years of um, education as 12. That is the Y bar and the X bar. And so you could have then another column that just does YI minus Y bar. And so um, the difference here is minus 25,000. So 50 minus 75 is minus 25,000. You do that with the rest. You have an xi minus x bar. You get the point. And so you can you can fill out all of the all of these variables there. You could then for the the denominator there, you can have a second one that's xi minus x bar squared. And you can actually Without any fancy regression software, at least for um, a basic linear regression, you could do all of this in something like Microsoft Excel. Um, and so you would effectively, with the computer, be creating something that looks like this. Okay, and so that's ultimately what regression is doing. You're creating a line, or in multivariable regression, uh, it's not exactly the line because it's not two-dimensional, but you're, you're fitting an equation uh, to minimize the distance, uh, to minimize the distance of the actual value from the predicted value. Uh, you're squaring those residuals, and then you're finding a constant coefficient and all of the regression coefficients to minimize the squared um, sum of the deviations. Okay, um, so uh, let's let's see. Yeah, let me just say a little, one more thing about these. So the beta zero and the beta one. The beta zero as you can see, this goes through uh, y bar and x bar. And so what beta zero is doing is that it's ensuring ensures the regression equation passes through the means of x and y. It ensures the regression equation passes through the means of x and y. And beta 1 is, well, we can think about this. So, What we're seeing here is the variation of x from its mean and the variation of y from its mean. And down here, we're seeing again the variation of x from its mean uh, squared. 
And so to just write that in a little bit easier uh, language, what we have there is the joint variation of x and y around their means joint variation of x and y around their means or averages over the variation of x around its mean. And ultimately again, and actually these should have our estimates on there, our hats. And so again, that's a very similar to saying how does y change when x changes? And then it's going to be all else equal. Um, but a similar concept there. And so in the end, um, it's you need to have variation in x and y. If if one of the variables isn't changing, if 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 everybody in the sample has the same level of education all the way down, everybody has twelve years of education um, in the whole sample, you're not going to get any meaningful. You're not going to get a result. Uh, in order to do regression, you have to have uh, variation in both x and y in all of the x variables. Um, so when you have this variation you can get that co-variation between x and y and that's going to help you uncover um, the relationship there. Okay, so um, that's the general idea I wanted to present in this video. We have a couple more um, similar concepts and just kind of to explain why we have to include a, uh, a constant term and what would happen if we didn't. Um, a couple more small additions to include in the last video of this series. Um, and then in the next we're going to go into some more uh, specific details and some examples of using um, regression and uh, linear regression, multivariate regression in practice. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.